January, I was going through my makeup and I was just kind of organizing and I started picking out products where I was like, that was kind of a dud or that was kind of a fail. And I compiled all of them here. So this is going to be my worst makeup of 2021 and we are going to give these products one final try and today is going to be the chopping block as to whether they have redeemed themselves or they're getting trashed because I don't want to keep makeup that I'm not going to use what's the point um so I have gathered I'm almost positive a full face I think the only thing I don't have is yes I do have that so yes I have a full face of products here okay I'm missing a powder let me go back through my powders and make sure there wasn't anything that was kind of a flop. Otherwise, we're going to get started with brows. Okay, so no powders. Um, everything I have, I actually like and I use. So let's go ahead and jump into brows. So for me, there could have been so many products that I could list. Now, did I discover them in 2021? I'm not 100% sure. So the one that I picked, I know for sure I just discovered last year. This is the Dip Shape Go Long Wear Brow Pomade from NYX. Um, I actually tried this in like a full face of NYX that I um, had bought on sale from CVS. So the first thing I don't like about this is how many pieces you have. There's four little bits to this one thing. So you have to make sure you keep track of it all because you need it all to put it back together um, in the end. So you have your pomade in this, which to me seems hard to get to, and I don't really know how much product is in this little bit. So I'm guessing you brush your brows up, then you take the brush, try to dip it into the pomade but it's really hard to like get a clean sweep just because of the nature of how the pomade is stored it's not like a pot and so my problem is i get it on the sides of the brush and not the actual tip of the brush okay mirror would help so let's go ahead and apply this see what i mean though there's more product on the edges then on the bottom, which is really where I need it to place it, but like, if you do that and just pull it out, it's going to be messy and ill-formed, so you kind of want to wipe it on the side to reshape the brow, but then you lose the product that's on the bottom, and then it's exclusively on the sides, and I don't know, something about it just doesn't sit well for me, how small this is, it actually like, is kind of making my hand cramp. The other thing I don't like is that you have this whole big piece that's literally nothing other than a connector piece for all these little pieces that you have to have so my feelings on this I don't even remember how to put this all back together if I'm being honest does this go here this goes there my feelings on it are it's just too finicky like it hurts my hands to use <laughs> Um, the pomade in it is fine. Like, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with the actual product. I just don't like the contraption or the application method. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and let this go because I know myself and I am not going to use this. So we're going to go ahead and say goodbye to this product. For eyeshadow, I would say it's been a pretty good year of consistent winners with uh, trying different eyeshadows. Honestly, the eyeshadows that I have, they mostly come from ColourPop. Um, that is what largely takes up my collection. But this palette that I just wasn't super thrilled with is from Essence. This is their Bonjour Montreal eyeshadow palette. Um, here is what it looks like. Like, the colors are pretty. Like, they swatch good, but I don't know. It's like they, they almost lose pigment uh, as you place them on the eyes now what i have done is i used my elf putty eye primer to really give them a base to stick to to see if they're really going to be pigmented enough or not now not all essence eyeshadows have been kind of disappointing like this one i also have this palette from them the coral me maybe i love this palette i think this is a great palette absolutely love this one but the bonjour montreal just didn't live up to the hype. So let's go ahead and play with this today. So I am going to pack the brown shade right here all over my lids. And then we're going to kind of just diffuse that out along the edges. Above that brown, I'm going to take a little bit of this shade and just kind of blend out slightly. Here are the four shimmers. I'm, I'm liking the green. Let's try the green. Let's see what happens. So let's put just a smidge of concealer 
in the center. We'll do a little halo eye now. Can you see, though, that it did kind of lift off right there by my brow? Okay. Now I'm going to take my finger, and I'm going to tap into that green. It's pigmented, but I don't know. It, it looks more vibrant on my finger than my eyelid. Am I crazy, or do you see what I mean? Like, let me swatch it again. Am I crazy? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. It just doesn't look quite as vibrant as when it's swatched. Um, let's take a little bit of this gold on either side of the green. So I'm going to tap my brush into it. Yeah, definitely not getting that vibrancy with a brush at all whatsoever. I don't know. It just doesn't have the same impact on the lids as they do when you swatch. I just, I think for the shadows that I do have like I don't need something that I am not thrilled with like I'm just not thrilled with this does it look horrible no if you're balling on a budget this might be a great palette for you they have different themes different colors um within each theme palette but for me like let me find a green hold on okay this is a green from the ColourPop Mandalorian palette like, it, this one from the Bonjour looks great swatched, but then when it's applied, it just kind of loses some of that luster. But anyways, I think I am just going to go ahead and get rid of this because I'm not pulling it because this is what I get. I get just a little bit dulled down compared to when you swatch it on your finger. It's just not quite there. So I'm going to go ahead and pass on this eyeshadow palette. For mascara, this was so hyped up. This was like... Literally, people were going to multiple stores to find this because it would be sold out, and it was the mad hunt, I feel like. This is the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational Mascara. First of all, my packaging was crap, but this did not make me excited whatsoever. Here's what the brush looks like. You guys, I just didn't like it. I don't know what else to say. It, there was no, there was nothing. There was just no, I don't even know. I just didn't. I just didn't. Okay, so let me apply it and I'll show you. It's a very bendy, flimsy brush, if you can see that. Okay, let's go ahead and apply this and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it is just so wet and clumpy. Like, this was even hyped up on TikTok. This kept being one of the ads that I would see on TikTok. Like, oh, the Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. And I just don't like it. It just makes my lashes so wet. They feel heavy. And they're very clumped together. I just, ugh. So why am I putting on the other eye? I have no idea. Like, look, just from blinking, it's transferred down onto my bottom lashes. It's just so wet. I don't like it. I don't like when my lashes feel heavy like that, and they're just clumpy. This is just not it for me. I actually already had this in my bucket to talk about, like, throwaways, uh, products that didn't work for me. And just thankfully, I hadn't thrown it away, so I grabbed it back out for this video. But now it's officially <laughs> leaving my collection. Okay, I need a sip of coffee. It would help if the lid, if the lid was open. Have anybody tried this? I put it in my coffee today. The Vital Proteins Collagen Creamer. 10 grams collagen per serving. Skin, hair, nail, and joint support made with coconut milk powder. Um, no added sugars. Paleo friendly. It's supposed to promote youthful appearance. Skin, hair, nail support. Skin elasticity. Healthy joint and bones. Mix in hot liquids, gluten, and dairy free. It's got a lot of... Um, amino acids that are supposed to be good for you. It's got, like I said, 10 grams of protein, 120 milligrams of calcium, 10 grams of collagen peptides. So I did put this, and you definitely can taste the vanilla flavor. I put this in my coffee today. And I wasn't too much a fan of the vanilla flavor, but then I put a little bit of lavender syrup in it. it tastes great. Okay, for primer, I got this at TJ Maxx, and I was super excited for this primer. This is the Moisture Lock Primer from e.l.f. Honestly, when I used it, I don't feel like I really had that much moisture added to my skin. I mean, oh, look at that. I got eyeshadow on my lip. It feels good. 
like when you're applying it feels lotiony but once it dries your skin almost feels kind of dry and tacky like it's just not what you would expect from something that's supposed to be moisture locking look at that what is it doing it's like clumping oh it's got clumps on my hands too. Ooh. I got clumps on my hands from this. So we're gonna use this one last time today. Like I just, I never really heard anybody talking about it. Maybe this is why it was just a complete dud. But thankfully I didn't spend very much on it at TJ Maxx. I don't feel like it locked in any moisture. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to the side. Okay, for face, for foundation I should say. I have four products here. They were just uber disappointing. First one, CoverGirl Outlast. Multiple times I have tried this. Cannot make it work. Do not like it. The Neutrogena, Nitrogen, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hydrating Foundation Stick broke apart like crazy. Thankfully, this was free. I'm so sad about this one. The KVD Good Apple <laughs> Skin Perfecting Foundation Balm cannot make this work for me. I've seen other people and they just hype it up. They love it. It doesn't look right on me. Then the Maybelline Fit Me Tinted Moisturizer. I did a video where I tested out four tinted hydrators, you know, tinted moisturizers, tinted foundations, that kind of a thing. This was in that but for me personally, it just doesn't work very well, and I don't know why. Um, so I'm kind of torn between trying these two today. Maybe we'll just do half and half, because honestly, I'm going to wash all of this off as soon as I'm done. So let's go in with the Tinted Hydrator. Why not? The Maybelline Fit Me. This is 103. I don't know what. It's just 103. There is no. It's probably the lightest, let's be honest. So I'm going to take my sponge. I'm going to spritz it with a little bit of setting spray and let's oh this is making my skin itch okay yeah we're definitely washing our face okay so let's go ahead i think that was the other problem is how peachy looking this is or yellow is that yellow i think it is yellow oh i just skipped right over concealer we'll go back and do concealer that looks so odd on my skin but i'm almost wondering if it isn't that elf moisture locking primer because, like, back here doesn't look too bad, but right here does. It's, like, not sticking to my face. It's, like, picking back up. Let's see. That is, whoop! Oh, that's making it look worse. It's, like, the more I try to apply on my cheek, the more it just picks it right back up. That's odd. I'm going to set that to the side for just a second. We may, that one may have its one reprieve because I'm wondering if that e.l.f isn't having something to do with it. So let's go ahead and go on to the other side. The Good Apple, this is in Light 06. All right, I'm gonna apply some of it with the KBD brush and then we'll pounce it in with my sponge. You don't, if you haven't watched those videos, I will link them for you. I seriously tried so hard to make this foundation work. So hard, it feels amazing. The coverage is great, it just, doesn't wear well. It's just, oh, it's honestly like the saddest makeup purchase because I wanted it to work so darn badly. Oh, it's just so full coverage and it feels like nothing. That's what I think the hype is, is it feels like nothing, but you are getting maximum coverage. Now see, this side looks nice. This side, do you see that? Isn't that the weirdest? Is that the e.l.f. primer? Now, here's the tricky part, though. On application, this looks great, but it just will wear so poorly. But this one, I don't remember having this issue when I tested it for my tinted moisturizer video. So, we're going to keep moving. This one may get one last reprieve because I'm thinking that e.l.f. did something to it. This one, I'll show you at the end or at the end of the day what. Well, I won't be able to show you because I'm going to wash all this off because it's itching. <laughs> I'm going to set these two to the side. I am definitely going to go ahead and get rid of these. This one, it was so hydrating, it just, it broke down like nothing. I mean, it's very oily, and it just, it pulled apart before I was even done with my makeup. So, and then this one, do not like it. Just stick with the True Blend Matte Made. Okay, moving into concealer. I have two here. 
um, that I wanted to show you. Yes, my face is itching. All right, so on one side, we're going in with the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Hydrating Concealer. For me, this had no coverage whatsoever. Like, I do have purple right in here. There's that. This is in the shade 310 Porcelain. All right, and watch. It just it blends to nothing. Well, now it's actually giving me some coverage. What the heck? Okay, I guess you'll go over to this side too because that looks a lot better. Now, on the other side, I'm going in with the Essence Camouflage Matte Concealer. Honestly, the only reason I don't like this is because it's matte. I just can't do matte concealers. This is in the shade Light Rose. My face is just too dry for light, for, <laughs> excuse me, matte concealers. Yeah, that looks terrible. Look. Look at that. Yeah, this one can go. I am not a matte concealer girl. Now on this side, can you see as it dried down, like the purple is coming back through? It's almost giving me more of a shine and a gloss than actual coverage to the purple. Like it looks shiny, so therefore when it catches the light, it looks brightened. But when you really get up into it, you can still, it like dries down and my purple comes back through. So for that reason, I am going to go ahead and get rid of these two concealers. They just, one is too light coverage, one is way too matte. So those can go. Let's move in to blush and highlighter. It is actually a two-in-one -one product. The ColourPop Cheek Palette. This is in Sugar Frosted. So we have Jelly Roll, which is the highlighter. Hay Pudding, Cookie Crumble, and Trifle. I am so disappointed in this highlighter. Like, it is just not as impactful as I thought it would be. It doesn't have as much pigment, pigment as I had hoped. It's this very odd goldeny I don't know I just don't like it honestly I was really excited to get this palette and then once I tried the highlighter I was kind of just over it so you take your brush into it and then okay let me do blush first because you can't really see it so the blush is in this I'm just not a fan of them either like these two lighter ones you can't really see anything the darker blush is okay I would say that's definitely the best out of these three um, I would almost consider this top one, Hey Pudding, more of a blush topper. It's got kind of that shimmer in it, very just kind of goldeny, shimmery flex in it. So let me put a little bit of blush on first. We'll go in with the darker shade, but that's my problem. If out of this whole palette, I'm only liking one pan, that's not good enough for me. <laughs> now let's go over it with the blush topper. Yeah, it's not really adding any shimmer whatsoever. Now let's go back into the highlight. So, like where? Let me get a finger. Let's see. I don't know. I tried this multiple ways. I don't have much to say for it other than I'm just not a, I'm just not a fan of it. I'm ready to part ways with it. Like every time I see, see it in my collection, I'm just kind of sad about it because I'm, I just don't like it. I definitely would recommend their Super Shock highlighters over this now are the other shades better maybe I don't know I haven't tested them but just from trying this one I am just not thrilled with like I said three out of the four pans so for me that's not worth me keeping it in my collection okay bronzer I have two that, okay this is kind of a bronzer face palette I was not super thrilled with this this is the physicians formula all-star face palette number one there was only one shade of it, and for darker skin tones, this is not going to... Oh, powder! This is not going to work. Oh, got that scent out of it. So, out of this, I would say my favorites would be this blush. It's not my favorite blush, but if I have to choose out of this palette, products I actually liked would be this blush. And the powder is okay, as long as I can kind of get into, like, that right... This highlighter is very rosy gold which is fine and then this highlighter was a disappointment because when you first get it if you can see in between the pearls it was a silver but then once you actually get into it it's another golden highlight so for someone who's as fair and as pale as me that doesn't work like I really wanted that lighter silvery highlight but it just turns gold after the top coat's gone then 
this um, Matte Minoy Butter Bronzer. I'm sorry, but that is so orange. That is orange. That's not golden. That's not tan. That's orange. You just can't. You just can't with that. Now, the Murmur, Murmur, Murmur Butter Bronzer is fine. This is, I think, just in the regular shade. Yeah, it's just the Butter Bronzer shade, bronzer, which is what I have in its own separate thing. I like half the palette. Um, the other half I'm not a super fan of. Now, on that same front with orange bronzers, this is the Hard Candy Just Glow Matte Bronzer plus Mango Butter. And this is in the shade Maui Matte. It's orange. It's much lighter. But for someone as fair as me, it's still orange. It's just a very lighter, it's a lighter shade of orange. That's the only difference. <laughs> I did use that powder. I'll use, let's tap on a little bit of this. Powder Palette Mineral Glow Pearls in Translucent Beige. Okay. So that was my other issue is that with this palette, they didn't release like a light version, a medium version, and a dark version. They released one. Well, clearly this doesn't work for me, and it's not going to work for someone with very dark skin either. So it really, it's like, why? Who, are, who is your target here? Anyways, I digress. So let's go ahead and put on this very light orange bronzer. I'm so glad I'm washing my face after this. Orange. Here, let me show you a little bit of the, oh, Matt Minoy Butter Bronzer. Orange. In my head, all I can hear is that guy from TikTok. Emotional damage. Emotional damage. Because when you're someone who's as fair as me, that's emotional damage. That is straight orange. And I don't believe there's a lighter shade. I think that's like the lightest shade that came in that. Matt Minoy. It's orange, you guys. So, while I do like this powder, it's not something that I seek out specifically for this powder. This blush is fine. Don't seek it out specifically. I have this in an individual component. So, for me, I'm going to go ahead part with that. And I'm going to go ahead and part with this too. Okay, for lips. I feel like lips is kind of hard to go wrong. Um, unless it's really like the formula you're not uh, enjoying. And I don't really have anything like that. For me, the one thing that I was kind of like, why? Was this Wet n Wild Mega Slicks Balm Stain Moisturizing Lip Color in Ready or Not. It actually is a nice color. I got this in the Wet n Wild Advent Calendar for this year. My issue with it is, it is a little bit, almost too shiny. It gives me the appearance of like little kid makeup, you know, and like you have those little pots of that wax color and they dip their finger in it and they just wax their whole entire face. But also, even if I did like it, you can't purchase this. These are not being made. This was solely put in that advent calendar. So if I did like it, I can't repurchase it. So what's the point of selling it if it's not even in production anymore? Not on your website, not anywhere that I could find. So for me, I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm never going to use that. Like, look how slicky, waxy that looks. That's, that's, that's a no for me. Okay, three products I had sitting here that I forgot to mention. One is for eyes. These were also super hyped when they came out. This is the Maybelline Color Strike Cream to Powder Eyeshadow Pen. I personally was not a fan of this. And they had, I mean, a lot of um, demos, like the one girl with the dark blue, and she's like, pop, 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 and she's out the door. So this is what this one looks like. This is in the shade 05 Hustle. It's a pretty gold, but then when you actually applied it to your lid, it just didn't do very much. It's kind of the same just as the Bonjour Montreal. Like here it looks fine, but then once you apply it, it loses its luster a little bit. So I literally never pull this out. I think this is the only one I have. Or did I also get a matte one? Let me double check. I do have another one. This is a matte one in 45 Chase. I was thinking this was going to be like, you know, one and done's type deal. But this is just straight up orange. I don't like this matte color at all. And then when you blend them, they also really don't blend. So you put it on your eye and you try to blend it out and it's kind of stuck where you stick it. Like there's not really much time to blend it. 
Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of this matte one at all. Like it doesn't, it doesn't want to blend out. It's almost the same shade as that bronzer from the Hard Candy. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. This one, the shade is better, but again, there's no time to blend. So for me, these just, they're just sitting in my collection. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of them. Two eyebrow products I forgot to mention. This one is the L'Oreal Brow Stylist Boosting Set. Um, I hate the applicator. This applicator is awful. To try to run this through your brows, it just disperses the product so chunky and weird. And it's like flimsy and it's kind of the same deal with the NYX Dip Brow Dip Set Go, whatever that's called. The issue is the application. The brow gel, or what is it, brow gel, brow mascara is fine, but the applicator is just not where it's at, and it makes it to where you don't want to use the product because the application looks bad. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then this one. This is honestly the weirdest brow product. This is the Revlon Color Stay Brow Tint, and it is in 700 taupe. What are you supposed to do with that? How does that go in your brow? It's so watery. Do you go side? Like, look, it just, it just makes my brow look glossy. That's what I don't understand about it. Like, what is the purpose of this applicator? I, I literally don't understand it. It's like you're trying to paint your brow or something. Like, are you actually trying to paint the skin under your brow? Like, now it just looks wet. I don't know. I literally just don't know with this one. This one is odd. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. Haven't used it since I first tested it. And then the last thing is this palette. This also came in the advent calendar from Wet n Wild. What is this color story? Somebody tell me. You have this black. This red. This orangey brick color this awful purple color and then this very matte white color that is it looks great when you swatch it but when you apply it it blends out to virtually nothing i don't understand what the thought process was behind this color story and putting this in your advent calendar again this isn't even in circulation or production so if you if you like this you can't even go buy it why wouldn't they put one in that they actually have in stores because then if you tried it and you're like oh i really like this you know it had this is all matte by the way it had like a shimmer and matte and you're like this formula is great you may potentially go and buy other ones in the line that's not happening with this palette so i just don't understand it i absolutely don't use it i don't want to keep it let's look at the kvd side okay see now it looks fabulous Me and her have had a sordid history. I want her to be my favorite. And now it looks fine. I can't with this lipstick. It's so waxy. Okay, so the only product that is getting a reprieve out of this entire thing is this foundation. Because it looks great. But again, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm remembering correctly, it looks great on application, but the wear is awful. So, I'm going to wear this not much longer if i try this again i will put an update in the comments below but we are getting rid of one two three four five six oh i'm not gonna be able to hold all these seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen eighteen products yeah i can't hold the palettes all of this is going bye-bye along with these two palettes. I'm just, I'm not having it. So, let me know down below what products did you try this year that were just like, eh-eh, that ain't it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you will like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.